I am over the moon, excited and happy to finally become a father. I'm also simultaneously grieving the death what my life has been up to this point. Who I am is just going to die overnight. It'll now. be way slower than that. It's a slow death. <laughs> yeah. Slow burn. <laughs> just activity ac after activity will disintegrate from your reality. <laughs> It, don't worry. So, and that's where, like, the nervous... It's not a hit-by-a-bus death. Yeah, no, it's, it's like... It's a uh, long... You may want to sit down. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to take a while. a while, but you're yeah. going to die. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know it. I know it. We know it. This episode is always brought to you by Mo DeWitt, personal attorney. If it's a slip and fall, you're calling Mo DeWitt. If you're injured on the go... Just, Just call Mo. Mo. He's the man of events. He's the king of live events. He makes stuff happen. Yeah, that's what he does. And September 5th, the Mo Do It Comedy Jam. My God, that is the place to be. September 5th at the Orlando Funny Bone, the Mo Do It Comedy Jam. Don't know where to go? Go see Mo. This is a comedy jam. But it, we'll always make it rhyme. You can get your tickets at mocomedyjam.com. Once again, that's mocomedyjam.com. Dot com. com. Injured on the go? Just call Mo. Baby, I still haven't had one. It still hasn't happened. Ross doesn't have a baby. Yet. There it is. Welcome back. It's a cool guy club. It is. It's a cool guy. It's like Kmart. I don't know about that. I'll take it back. Welcome to Good Sauce episode <laughs> 21. We can drink. We can drink. We should drink. I, yeah, I was. that's what I was trying to say. We before. did not plan this out. Yeah, yeah, no, that just started off. We should drink. We'll take a shot at the end of this episode yeah. or maybe halfway through. Like a lot of 21st birthday parties, this is wildly unorganized. Yes, yes. Welcome <laughs> to Good Sauce episode 21. My name is Ross. That is Joel. Hello. And that is Nico Renato. Yo, what's up? Okay, and uh, today is going to be a very special episode. I think the next episode is going to be very special. All episodes are special in their own right, but this I call it for what it is. Let me be self-aware. I'm about to have a child. It literally could happen during this podcast, which I'm pretty sure, Renato, you are rooting for. I Yeah. No, for content purposes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's a chance that you might hear a woman, you know, banshee screaming in the background. That's then, always a possibility. And then I got to go. Yeah. Houses get haunted. Uh, and then you guys are going to have to take over. Okay. Yeah. That This is a legit concern. Would you rather stay on the pod and have us raise your kid? <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, trade. I'm good with either. Just let me know. Yeah. We'll call an audible. Yeah. See how you feel in the moment. Uh, <laughs> how was your guys' weekend? Epic. Epic. You've traveled. Yeah, it turns out Labor Day weekend, I found out after being a part of it, is like a big travel weekend. Yeah. I got to the airport thinking it was going to be business as usual. Yeah, my wife. Not the case. Uh, Labor Day weekend. My wife was rooting to go into labor on Labor Day just so that my kid would have, you know, he would come out with an opening joke. Labor on labor. Uh, labor on labor. Double labor. Uh, Renato, you had a good weekend? I had a busy weekend working at uh, a hotel bar was just insane. It also was, a big holiday weekend spot. Yeah, it was and, and so busy. I, I called you this weekend. I just remembered this that you were like, dude, I was in the weeds for three days. Do you know about the weeds? Uh, explain. I mean, I could know all kinds of things. So, so, yeah, <laughs> what, yeah, yeah. Be more specific. <laughs> Why is it plural? <laughs> yeah, what? I'm confused what? already. What, what's up with the S? <laughs> yeah. No, uh, so weeds is one of my favorite terms in uh, the, the just the industry of serving and being a bartender is when the tickets just keep coming in. Oh. And then you go like, all right, I've got four drinks to make. I've got four tables. Okay, now I've got five. Now I got six. Okay, right. I have eight things to do right now. And then every now and then you'll just see like back a house, just like, you know, some waitress, Brittany, just like crying and like, I, which, which I, happened, I, I've got to stop doing this, which happened man. on my shift at Disney. You had a crier. Yeah, it was. She was trying not to. <laughs> she was trying to hold it. It was one of those like, oh, there's a couple different ways that can happen. Yeah. Was it because of something somebody said or just overwhelmed? By... She, t she told me later it was the overwhelmed feeling. Yeah. She was just it was too much. And it's so bad that to start. sometimes in like nightmares for servers and bartenders yeah. that's what they dream is just more tickets coming in yeah it's brutal, i saw dude i was training somebody one time and i saw them get overwhelmed and i just put my hand out and i said hey just don't forget nobody cares yeah yeah <laughs> and they were like what and i was like 
seriously. Yeah, I told none her, of this matters. I told just, her later. I was don't like, cry. I was like, at the end of the day, we're just making people pee and poop. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you, know, you told her? Yeah, I told you her that. Told a crying woman that. Yeah, just don't think about it too hard. You know, we're just, <laughs> you know. I think. Wow. Yeah, right. That's a perspective. I'm That's stuck, a Ronald right? McDonald quote. <laughs> like I want I want to say something funnier in return, you can't. in return but I can't. There's nothing. <laughs> I think that might be a tombstone. <laughs> All I did was make people be a poop. That's it. That's, that's all. That's our jobs. What a way to describe a chef. <laughs> yeah. I think Anthony Bourdain said that first. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. That's a um, Wolfgang Puck quote. But, uh, going back to, I mean, I feel like we've been talking about it for so long, and that at, at this could be the last episode where I thought last we've been week's talking episode, about this pregnancy longer than nine months. I, I swear to you, it might not even be real. I have no idea. She if might. You rope it up. Yeah. If that's a fact. That suit yeah, goes yeah. to you. Yeah, she might be doing something. <laughs> she just pulled off with some physical comedy on Mr. Bean level. Yeah. If that's, if she's not actually pregnant. I mean, she's committed, too, dude. Just every yeah. now and then she throws up. <laughs> it's like Method actors do that. Yeah, that's yeah. what they do. Uh, so, But I still feel like it's, you know, when in Rome, these last couple of weeks have definitely felt very uh, special knowing that I'm at the same time that I am over the moon, excited and happy to finally become a father, I'm also simultaneously grieving the death of what my life has been up to this point. Not all of my life up to this point. It's not like the who I am is just going to die overnight, but I am self-aware enough and smart no, enough to It'll know. be way slower than that. It's a slow death. <laughs> <Yeah>. Slow burn. <laughs> just activity ac after activity will disintegrate from your reality. It, don't worry. So, and that's where, like, the nervous... It's not a hit by a bus death. Yeah, no, it's, it's like... It's a uh, long... You may want to sit down. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's going to take a while. a while, but you're yeah. going to die. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm really, like, trying to soak it, soak it in. My wife is a, you know... A, a hard sneeze, squat and cough. I think I've ran through every single ism that I could think of. Haunted houses didn't work. Yeah, yeah. We went to Halloween Horror Nights. My wife went Halloween Horror Nighting, uh, nine and a half months pregnant. He tried to boo it out. Nine yeah. and a half months. Ah! Ah! I just, uh, yeah. And they tried, man. They tried. It was really cool, though. <laughs> they gave it their all. But I, I had this image, though. For no match bit. for this kid. She got a wheelchair for Halloween Horror Nights, right? Which was dope. And I was getting. It sounds like that's her Christmas present. Uh, yeah. That's what she got for Halloween Horror Nights. <laughs> <laughs> so I go ahead. Uh, I was pushing her the whole time, but I just thought it would be really funny just for like 10 feet if she pushed me just to have that image. It would be. Yeah, yeah. And we did that. And man, I was uncomfortable. You should The been. looks, dude. Oh, yeah, yeah, the dirty looks, I'm the sure were. Looks are so rough. Coming in. Like, well, if she's pushing it, what's he got? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at him. Was this his wish? <laughs> yeah. He's looking pretty gaunt. You know, you are got to be sick when you have a nine-month pregnant woman <laughs> pushing you around a theme park. I'm just, well, she's pushing me. I'm going, water. Help, help me, please. Insidious. <laughs> that beep, beep, beep. That's just me beeping as she pushes me around the theme park <laughs> because I could flatline. I got to say, I've been to Halloween Horror Nights and felt like that. Yeah, at times. yeah, yeah. I had a blast. Uh, uh, go see, go to the Insidious House, and don't uh, sleep on that Candy House. The Candy House. I'll spoil one thing in the Candy House because it was one of the coolest things I've ever seen at Halloween Horror Nights, which was a taffy puller. Right, mm -hmm. taffy. You know how taffy gets made. That whole like weird, yeah, uh, torture contraption that they usually <laughs> pull taffy with. Yeah, weird way to make something that I don't care for. Well, they <laughs> yeah they did it with organs. Ew, uh, and like uh, limbs and blood. I thought that was really but, uh, oh, why cool. no one's gonna eat that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I it, it what a fantastic event event that Central Florida has. Uh, shout out to Universal. I like that uh, years ago, Disney and Universal signed a treaty where Universal owns Halloween. Yeah. And Disney owns Christmas. Yeah, sure. that's fair. And they both do other things during that, but they acknowledge. Right. It's the great truce of holiday tradition. Yeah. <laughs> the War of I-4 was settled. That, that would be a fun thing to film, by the way. Throw on the, we'll write that down on the board of like the truce between Disney and Universal. You shall take Halloween. <laughs> And we will take Christmas. That's pretty. That's fun and epic. 
The that day, had to have happened. The day we both decide to give up all of our jobs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that. But uh, so now, because this is, you know, game seven Super Bowl, the last couple of days of not being a father, I wanted to let you guys know. Uh, I wrote down some of the things that I'm really, really looking forward to of being a dad. I thought you were going to say a list of things you needed to do before it happens. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, oh, this is an adventure episode. That, that list. I is have never robbed a bank. Infinite. I put the car, <laughs> have- I put the car seat in this weekend. Ooh, that was epic. You're making the dogs ride in it? Yeah. Just yeah. So you can practice hooking them in. I haven't, I haven't tried that out yet, but man, it you was. Know, I had a friend who had a baby and he couldn't figure out how to put the car seat in and he drove to the police station. Fair. And hey. they and they came out and they were like, oh, thank you for doing this. A lot of people don't do it right. And they showed him. Society. So I didn't know they would dads. do that. Dude, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I think we got it down. <laughs> has it fla- flown out yet? It has not. Then you're good. The front of it slides, but allegedly the front of it, is, it can slide, but the back of it can't slide. Did you put it in the car or on the hood? On the hood. Good. Nice. All right. So the top five dad <laughs> things that... I simply can't stop fantasizing about. And I know that my wife is in the other room listening to this. This is going to sound random. First overall draft pick. First thing I will bring up, third grade. Third. You you can't wait for his third grade. I can't wait for his third grade. The first grade, second grade, indifferent about, whatever. Or the first seven years of his life? Yeah, I could skip those. Okay. Third grade. why, Why third, though? There's something about third grade to me. Third grade was the most impactful of my elementary school years. It's the most I remember. So I I specifically remember a lot more in third grade. Miss Henpen, flashcards, Tara Mortensen. It was the first time where I saw a girl that I was like... <laughs> My name's my name's Don. It's Ross. Bye. Like it, uh, it was the first of so many things. I don't know why third grade just randomly is filled with so many memories. But the reason why I'm I'm so excited for his third grade is because I remember so much of my third grade, so I can like compare. Let me slide tackle your whole thing. Red card. It's a yellow because it's a warning. Okay. Dad warning. Dad warning. Referee. <laughs> just be prepared. That his third grade might not be in third grade. What is what? Oh, okay, Got you're it. or else you're imposing your Got it. What happened to you? Fair and uh, challenged. No VAR because there's something accepted. in between. The thing you're talking about is yes. awesome, but it might be first grade. It could, yes, it could be oh. fifth, fifth grade. It could be whatever. A thousand percent. So you let just me... have to know that moment when you see the eyes light up and you go, oh, third grade's happening. Yeah. It might, it might, it be might in, happen first might or be second. in three weeks, Ross. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. This kid yeah. might be more advanced. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He walks out going like, yo, what, what's my email? <laughs> uh, but third grade. <laughs> Sorry I didn't make it for Labor Day, Mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But third, yes. Thousand, whatever that third grade is. Because, dude, I remember third grade was probably the smartest I have ever felt. <laughs> I, I remember this that as tracks. well. I now I don't remember if this was in third grade, but I going back to what you said, everything is in third grade. What I'm referring to, third grade is just yeah, the, yeah. the term for what I'm uh, the first time your, your your friends are becoming best friends, right? Yeah, you, you know, start like really leveling it's, up. It's happening as a human. But man, I remember flashcards, dude. I dunked on this braces girl. She thought she had me. Then seven times seven happened. Bang, 49. What up? What up, Kristen? You ain't nothing, dog. Oh, it felt so good. And I can't, I want, I want that moment to yeah. happen to my son so he can come home and go, like, dude, this brace girl had nothing on me. And I'm going to be like, bloop, bloop, bloop. I remember that. <laughs> There's cheat codes to that. You can have him repeat a grade and not tell him. Oh, They're you like, know, how do I know all this? That's stuff what my grade? mom did. It worked. Yeah. My mom held me back because she was like, nah. Dude, and she lied to me. She was like, yeah, it's because you transferred schools. <laughs> and it's not because I transferred schools. She just wanted me uh, to have a year advantage of growing. <laughs> yeah, but dude, like, sometimes when you wash your clothes, and you're like, my shirt still smells funny. So you wash it again, and then it doesn't. She just washed you twice. <laughs> right. <laughs> She just redshirted you. <laughs> she redshirted me. She redshirted me in first grade. I remember third grade. Yeah, so think about the math. 
That makes it fourth grade. Uh, See? Already. I'm just saying, don't be too specific. Uh, note taken. Third grade was the first time I like farted accidentally <laughs> in class and then blamed it on someone else. And same thing. So same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Leveling up. Uh, as a I, human. I red-shirted you brown panted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another thing that I cannot wait for. Third grade, by the way, is also when I found out I was diabetic. <laughs> Maybe third, maybe third grade is that year. Dude, third grade, I, I feel it. like is uh, the first. Oh, it is epic. Because first, <laughs> first and second grade, you still dumb as hell. Like <laughs> you still, you still not with it. You're not killing it. You have no idea. You're you're excited. Over that can this. last a lot longer. God, I hope he's out with it by third grade. I hope he goes third grade and first grade. Dude, my neighbor knocked on my door. This was last school year and uh, uh, maybe 9.45 at night. I'm like, hey, and he goes, your car door's open. And my son had just gotten out of the car and walked in the house and not shut the door. <laughs> Can't wait. I'm not saying which kid it was, but Dawson did that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Halloween. Halloween has got me so excited for fatherhood. More, Probably more so than... I also wrote down Christmas because Christmas is going to be special. But What a time to be born. Straight into the holiday season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you realize how confused this kid's going to be when it sees your house not decorated for something? Yeah. It's coming straight into a haunted house. Yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. And then a Christmas mystical, you know, wonderland of a decor. Because you guys intern. decorate. Yeah, we do. And then, you know, long about what January? It's gonna be like, what's this? Yeah, oh, my life's been a lie. Yeah. <laughs> I thought the world was filled with wonder and enjoyment yeah. and, and you're celebrations like, it is <laughs> for a third of the year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's gonna be. I thought about that. My kid's birthday will be kicking off like my holiday season. That's pretty great. I like we're Also we're, it's going to be a, a during school birthday, uh, which is awesome because that means you get to have cupcakes at school. Yeah. Or whatever. Uh mine's in the middle of the summer Same. so I've never had that. Summer birthdays kind of <laughs> whack, kind of so, whack. Kind of It's cool cuz you can have a like a blast of a party. You can go to like big things, stuff that you couldn't do during the school year, but it's, it really you don't get all those people who aren't really your friend that just want a cupcake telling you happy birthday. And it's super, well, right. it, just the ride or die crew that shows up in the summer. It, yeah. it depends then on your parents on how much work are they willing to put in the to network, reach yeah. out and yeah. be like, hey, my kid's having a birthday. Oh, you know, like, and you'll be glad that that's still a few years off before you have to talk to other stupid kids stupid parents <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but halloween because that's lame that never gets fun what costume <laughs> my child is going to choose and go i want to be an astronaut or whatever it's not even going to talk this year you know oh what uh yeah yeah you get to decide that i've got to google like more stuff years. you can also decide what language language it speaks and if it has an accent if you guys get together on this quickly have you ever yeah. wanted... You could have a Creole baby. You yeah. could have a little gambit. <laughs> yeah. I, I, <laughs> I could just teach it French and not... I mean, you got a lot of opportunities. Nah, I want to go out for Halloween. I, I, like Billy Bob, uh, yeah, Sling Blade. Right. I don't know why my... Uh, let's, I'll cut that. Uh, another <laughs> thing... <laughs> uh, yeah, but I said Christmas. Christmas morning, it's as stereotypical as stereotypical gets... Really look forward to that. And that's also, the year mark for you of finding out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Christmas night is when I found out that I was going to be a dad. She dropped that pregnancy test. And I this is part of the stand-up act, and she's never told this, but I'll, I'll bet you guys it's, it's... I don't even feel like I had to write this joke because it's 100% true. When she gave me that pregnancy test, my dumbass thought, because it was in a box, and I was like, ooh, I'm getting a PS5. <laughs> I'm getting a video game. I'm getting a, a new. She knows I want that new Xbox Elite wireless controller, and those things are like 140 bucks. She balled out, and then she gave me something that was literally the reason why I'll never play a video game ever again. <laughs> and also, pregnancy not comfortably. Tests, yeah. Pregnancy tests aren't that expensive. Yeah, yeah. Like that's not even that great of a. What they tell you, You're right? Right. Like, what is this like? Twelve bucks? Well, yeah. <laughs> wow! Really cheaped it up this year, babe. You're like, this is gonna cost me money. Uh, this is <laughs> this is um going to probably be a little bit of a head scratcher, 
but the teenage years I am looking forward to kind of for the same reason of the whole third grade thing. But I look forward to the challenge of them looking at me going, I hate you. I hate you. You suck. Mm -hmm. You should make more money or whatever dagger that they're going to (laughs) Judas me in the back with. Like they're they because kids have the nuclear weapon codes. Yeah. I I feel more so than anybody else in someone's life. Yeah. They can always at any time, regardless of your effort level or success rate, make you feel like you've done nothing. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, my it can always make you feel like no matter what your best was, it didn't so even true. read on the radar. Yeah, right. I and it might be, this is another thing, you can't really see those coming. Like, you might think, oh, I had to miss this game, or I'm, oh, I am can't believe I wasn't there for this thing because I had to work, Another or whatever, like, and th- no, didn't even care. Uh, I've also been at a game, literally at the game, after the game, and had a kid go, did you see my game? And I was like, I'm still here. Yeah, yeah. I didn't show up to pick you up. And what? How did that? Yeah, I just. But then you might misorder their food for lunch somewhere. And they will never. And they'll just go, I can't believe you don't even know what I like to eat. (laughs) I can't believe you don't even know what I eat. I just paid for a summer camp. I just was there. But you are freaking out over no mayonnaise on the chicken sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> you know I love mayo. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my little, little brother's autistic, and he went to his first – he's in um, high school, freshman year high school. Ooh, big one. Yeah, my mom told me yesterday that um, he comes back with that high school attitude now, which he never had. You know, yeah, but, he found it. But like, she'll ask him to do something like, can you put these dishes in the sink? And he'll just come back with like – Jackson, put the dishes in the sink. You know what I mean? He's like, that was never you before, you know, but because of high school and teenagers, and, you know, like, I don't know. It's and just then this to is everyone. also part of the teenage years. And maybe this makes me sick, uh, like, a, like a sick person. I can't wait for their first heartbreak. And I root <laughs> and I hope that it happens in high school because I am a I'm a big believer of get your heart broken in high school so you're not 25 with yeah. a full heart. Thir- yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> You've got to you should have gotten a couple of heart dents by 25, 30 years old. So that way when that I, I hope everyone gets to experience heartbreak and loss hopefully young. Uh, yeah, my- when it comes to dating cuz it's like nah, whatever. It, uh, yeah. My first heartbreak was at a young age, for sure. Yeah, yeah, uh, right. Sixth grade, I think. Uh, she, I was obvi- I was looking back at it. I was an obvious rebound. <laughs> yes. She only dated me to to make her ex boyfriend <laughs> jealous. We went on a field trip to uh, at the time it was called Wonderworks, and uh, did the relationship last the bus ride home? No, she broke. <laughs> She asked me out before Wonderworks. We went to Wonderworks. Wonder you had a less than two bus ride romance? Yeah, no, no. That's why I was so heartbroken because I was like, dude, she played me. And I went home and went to my mom and was like, she played me. But- <laughs> wow. And you know what it came down to? He didn't want kids. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderworks. The yeah. upside down building. Upside down building. Yeah. Oh, dude. <laughs> I think they cut the noise, but there used to be a security guard outside of Wonderworks that just had to deal with that night in, night out of just hearing the building metal on metal scraping. <laughs> that man is a murderer. He has taken multiple lives. That security guard that yeah. worked outside of that building that just had to hear an earthquake. Yeah. <laughs> he goes <laughs> home <laughs> earthquake after every shift and plays so much Call of Duty so hard. <laughs> <laughs> hey, honey, how's work? Can't talk. <laughs> but there it is. We have to take a quick break. Uh, more, more uh, about to be a parent talk, and also Joel just uh, went traveling and saw some of the coolest stuff that this country has to offer, and not enough people know about it. So mm-hmm. we can't wait to tell you about that. Listen to some ads. We will be our back. 
It's an honor, a privilege, and a treat to be able to tell people about the History Center that we've been blessed with here in Orlando, Florida. Four stories of imagination, four stories of learning, four stories of memories. Within those four stories, we hear the story of the watermark, 30 years of LGBTQ plus coverage. Before it was as heavily covered as it is now, they were kind of setting the standard. Every third Thursday of every month, GOAT of date nights. From 5 to 9 p.m., they open up the doors. It's kind of like an adult theme kind of night. It's every adult's favorite price. Free. Free! If you love Central Florida and you love Orlando and you want to know more about how it came to be, the History Center is the place to be. That kind of rhymed. That did rhyme. It might have been the same word. Regardless, thehistorycenter.org. I think one of the coolest things starting this podcast was finding out that Half Barrel Beer Project wants to get on board so I can spread the news of an amazing local business, bar, pub, eatery. If you are working at any of the theme parks, this should be your new local hub. It's great. It's right over by the convention center. It's it's the coolest thing around there. And if you're in that part of town at all, it's where you need to go. If you're a beer nerd like Joel and I, yeah. uh, uh, aka we like drinking beer, every now and then you kind of want something a little top shelf. This is that top shelf beer plug. Good parking. They got great menu, lunch or dinner. It's, uh, it's a banger. And I think it, people are going to be happy if they go check it out. One of the highlights every week of doing this podcast is letting people know that Half Barrel Beer Project is the place to be. Local, amazingly owned, phenomenal food, great beer. That is your new place. Half Barrel Beer Project. That's halfbarrelproject.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Welcome back. Good sauce. My name's Ross. That is Joel. Uh-huh. That is Nico Renato. Back again. Just three boys. Three dogs. Three Piggly Wigglies that <laughs> got real aggressive and then very cute. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I like what we're animals. Yeah, yeah. We're pigs and dogs and stuff. Yeah, we pigs, we dogs. We uh, we're used to also play a game where I'd listen to um, the radio, and when a song's playing, I'd ask the car, I'd be like, all right, what kind of animal sings this song? And then we would imagine, like, you know, you're listening to Beyonce or whatever. I'd be like, penguin. And then you just imagine that animal singing that song <laughs> it's a always a better song yeah yeah. yeah yeah and when that movie sing came out i was like yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's what i've been doing <laughs> like animals singing top 40 yeah it's like, about time like our theme song i know adam scharf sings it yeah but in my mind he's like a meerkat a meerkat <laughs> yeah Can you imagine just like a like a cool, sultry meerkat with like some shades on yeah. singing our theme song. Oh, How, yeah. Was it cool bringing your kids to a zoo for the first time? I didn't have zoo on my list of I things. Couldn't that I couldn't wait to show to. them captive animals. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, do you want to know what wildlife looks like in jail? <laughs> you want to see what a lion looks like if it murdered a couple peeps? Would you like to see the look of a giraffe with no hope? <laughs> I mean, well, so no, Ross. I don't know. I'm I'm pumped up for zoo. zoos. Are I I look at zoos as kind of like a perfect debate, and I do. I am a I'm on the side of the aisle of like zoos definitely do more good than harm, but at the same time, I I've also seen zoos you know not nail it. Yeah, I, I was driving in Louisiana with my brother one time, saw a gas station sign that said. Uh, Live tiger gas three twenty five. Oof! You'd think the gas at the tiger place would be way more than that. Yeah, and I'm like, it was just weird to see live tiger come next for the, to come for the gas, stay for the tiger. Yeah, like you see the advertisement for the tiger, <laughs> and it's right next to unleaded. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is odd. What? But then we stopped, and we're like, we have to see this thing, and it was the saddest uh, living anything i've ever seen it was a yeah. tiger in a cage at a gas station and then the gas station was selling like uh peta tastes like chicken shirts <laughs> like they were because when you walked in you Where were, were you? <laughs> you, the story was being told like oh yeah i'm not the only one hating on you guys for having a live tiger uh next to a gas station i've never heard anybody call it peta peta is a peta is a pita it's pita pita peta makes it sound like Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a pedophile. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it is pronounced ethical. Pe the eh. 
Yeah, yeah, so it's, you, it's definitely PETA. There's, a, there's an argument for what you said. It's just wrong. <laughs> just so you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. PETA, don't come after me. They will. Oh, they're coming. I, I wonder. Yeah, <laughs> they will already. Wait, you got leather on? <laughs> and the, I think lot. you're good. You're pretty granola today. <laughs> yeah. He's got a leather belt on, so yeah. Never just, mind. Yeah. Get out. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but uh, I'm I trash think, person. I think zoos would be cool. <laughs> it, it depends on the zoo though, because some if the zoo has a low budget, it gets sad real quick. But if the zoo is like zoos and shopping malls. High ceiling, sad bottom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they that they, they absolutely like do. Like my fantasy team that I drafted last yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, fantasy mm-hmm. football is right around. Yeah, the your corner. your fantasy team could end up being that other kind of zoo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. just that, not that gas station tiger zoo. Not that great. Yeah, but you, uh, uh, I want to take my kids to places. You just did some traveling without your kids, I believe, this weekend. I didn't take them. They're on a trip right now. They're, everyone's traveling over. My kids in a are Warren household worldwide. We roam. We're so wanderers, us you, Warrens. You went to Denver. I did. I flew out to uh, the capital of hippie America, Denver, Colorado. Yeah, they're, they're up there. Them, them in Portland, on the edge of the Rockies. Here's the thing: Portland, Portland is, has that whole keep Portland weird thing. Yeah. Denver is right there with them. Denver has embraced weird at a high level, like corporate weird. First state to basically go like, yeah, smoke weed. Smoke weed every yeah, day. Yeah, they're kind of like, <laughs> like that's, they, they just straight Nate dogged. Yeah. They were the first U.S. state to just b- bump slightly stupid. But you know, <laughs> the, the weed thing has been there so long mm-hmm. that it's not even... Not a thing. thing. It's it's there, it's, but it's almost everywhere now. So that's not their identity. They've doubled down on like art, which is, you know, uh, and not even uh, commercial, like uh, museums and painters you've heard of before. I went and visited uh, a Meow Wolf exhibit. I don't know if you guys know what Meow Wolf is. but I, it's like do, a- I do know what a Meow Wolf is. I know <laughs> that there are multiple. There are. They do installation uh, pieces. They do huge this one's like a city block size the one that's in denver they're based out of santa fe new mexico there are rumors that there might be one in orlando there's one in vegas yeah um anyway they're all over the place meow wolf look them up they're fun but they do these epic art installations and i went to one it's called convergent station it's supposed to be like four different worlds meet together and then you just explore them so it's five stories of outer space spider web nonsense it's and you can literally they don't really tell you what to do yeah they just put you in there and they go wander around and you have a time you can go in and then you can stay as long as you want and you really could have a very different experience whether you turn left or right in this place they have uh i they have a couple of very famous art installations that I think go from, like, did you see the refrigerator? There's a fridge. You open it up. Uh, blinding light yeah. is behind it. And then you walk through the fridge into a different dimension. Yeah, this is also yeah. what, uh, you mentioned the weed thing before. Yeah, yeah. You don't need any sort of drug Yeah, it's in this place. In silver fact, acid. If you are on a drug, any kind, you might lose your mind if you go into this yeah. place. It is overwhelming visually and the soundscape and just, they don't tell you anything. Because in Orlando, they're like, go into this room, do this thing, then walk out. That's the gift shop. Yeah. This was kind of like, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> and I've, it wasn't, I've, it's not, uh, you know, we had a hookup, so, our, you know, uh, we got some tickets, but... It's not cheap, but it's definitely worth it. How and much? Fifty? I think it's closer to seventy. Woo! Sounds like a work trip, though. Oh uh, yeah, a little work trip. For me, I mean, I used my Hollywood contacts. So. Oh, I'm talking <laughs> about us, this podcast. Oh, you oh, want to go to Meow If yeah, ever there is it. a good saucy thing, mm-hmm. you know, it, it was this. But here's the flip side. So I mentioned Denver has a lot of different stuff going on. We had a power 48 hour trip to Denver. We did all the normal stuff, breweries, saw our friends, saw their new baby, shout out, new baby Landon in the world. Uh, But then we went to what is now my favorite thing that Denver has to offer right now. If you're fans of South Park. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Casa Bonita. Which is like my favorite episode as well. So I I I love South Park. I have nothing but uh respect for Trey and was it Matt? Matt. Um they are comedy gods. They are yeah. painfully good at what they do, and uh I wish to be anywhere close as creative. But I ha- there's so many South Park episodes. And I've seen a lot of them. I have not seen the Casa Bonita episode. I don't know what Casa Bonita is. Let me tell you. In a strip mall, in a suburban area in Denver, there's a Dollar Tree. There's a Planet Fitness. (laughs) There's a brewery. And then there is a giant pink castle. Nice. It's uh, Mexican-themed. I mean, pink as pink. The rest of the... Uh, strip mall is one story. This looks, it's huge. It's got like a three story peak to it. It's giant and it's Casa Bonita, a Mexican restaurant like no other. It has a waterfall with cliff divers. It's nice. that big inside. Okay. They See. dive into the water. There is a magic show, there is a puppet show. You can get lost in like a haunted house type cave system that's in there. And it is probably the best themed dinner I've been to in a very long time. And, and how- I recently went to Medieval Times. Yeah, yeah. and Which is insane, dude. We posted a clip of us talking about Medieval Times. I comedically invited uh, Medieval Times to be a collaborator on the post. <laughs> just because I thought it would be really funny. I knew that they wouldn't. But that clip... Has like we have found our people and our people have found us. Yeah. The medieval the times, medieval people. Yeah, the medieval people. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> let me tell you, the medieval people would love Casa Bonita. Uh, the Bonita people are also something because here's the thing. Casa Bonita's been there a long time. I've been there. I went there over ten years ago. I've gone been going to Denver pretty regularly forever. But when I went before, it was the OG Bonita. That closed during COVID. And the South Park guys bought it and pumped money into it and then now have reopened it and it's become a who's like you can't get in. The only reason I got a reservation was because a year ago when this couple that just had a baby was getting married, I emailed Casa Bonita to try to get a reservation. Wow. I got a response three weeks ago that said your Casa Bonita reservation window, congratulations. And it happened to have the dates that we were going this weekend. That's awesome. Let's so, it, I mean, you couldn't have planned this out perfect, more perfectly. And I had wanted to go to Meow Wolf during that wedding, too. Mm-hmm. So always be cool and don't worry about your own agenda on a vacation because you might get a karma redo the next year. That's what happened to me. That's awesome. Literally, we did for, within the same 24 hours, we went to Meow Wolf, ate lunch, Sobered up from outer spaceville, yeah, and then dipped right back into fantasy land and went to uh, Casa Bonita for an awesome night. And we ended up with a uh, cliffside dining, which is not most places don't have cliffs. Yeah, right. but we were right there, so we watched all the people diving in the water. Is and there I, a show, or are they just it, diving? The, the whole thing is kind of a show. There, it's very overwhelming. There's a lot going on. And there's someone that's like, do you want more salsa? And you're like, yeah. I think I do. Uh, 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 let me dive. Uh, yes. I, I got, <laughs> Spicy. I got so overwhelmed at this place that the guy came and asked me if I wanted a world-famous sopapilla. And I said, yes, for the table. And then my wife was like, what did you just order? And I went, I don't I know. know. I, don't <laughs> I don't know what it is, but if they have it, I want it right now because I don't think we'll ever get back in. Yeah. And so <laughs> I, it turns out it was dessert and it's great. But It, it comes <laughs> and goes for me. I know Sopapia is, uh, I believe, like fried and then there's ice cream. Right? I didn't get any ice cream. Oh, no. but, but it's like a fried. Fr- it's like a bread with they put honey and there's, I don't know what happened to me. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I just tried to not do it wrong. Like I some, bought a hat. Yeah. yeah uh, so, Renato, you are you know you be bartending and serving. You've just described something right then and there that I have experienced so many times in my life where I'm looking at the menu, I'm looking at the menu, server shows up, go time, and I'm like, uh, the whole time I'm thinking steak burrito, steak burrito, steak burrito. He shows up, hello, sir, what would you like? I go, chicken quesadilla. And I, I'm like, I, yeah. I, I panicked. Mm-hmm. That's a, I, that's a big thing. You and do then that? you're like, why did I say that? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. did want the other thing. Who am I? Who's driving right. And who said that? <laughs> Who's in control Who jumped in? And, yeah. yeah I'm like, am I, I not in charge? Yeah. I, I, what, do you see that? 
when you're if you're working if you uh, when you were a server back in the day just people like like kind of panicking yeah right, right yeah in there yeah i mean i don't know i i try to give them like a little bit of time i try to make sure that they like their menus down like they've already oh the yeah you know what i mean i if, if i call. see that they're still kind of looking through it and trying to decide i don't want to come up there and just Dr- ruin their whole drive throughs mm-hmm. drive throughs i've crumbled that's oh. why I stopped eating fast food. Not because the food is unhealthy. It's because like I Too panic, much decision, sweat, right? and break out in hives in a drive through yeah, There's a lot of pressure. There's so much stuff. There's the, uh, uh, let me get a kid's meal. God, I'm 35. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? It's, it's I, portion control and you get a toy. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. I don't disagree on that. Terrible choice. idea. They should have yeah. adult <laughs> toy, adult meals, dude. It comes with like a... A beer? Yeah, yeah. Like a beer or like... <laughs> It comes with like a six piece nugget and a one hitter. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like the Denver number yeah, one. Yeah, that, that sounds, sounds like, like something like... that would be in Denver. For but sure. you got your art on. And uh, I wanted to really talk to you about Denver because the older I get, the more I am falling in love with art. Well, then. In you, the you... broadest <laughs> definition of the word. In Denver, you get it at the airport. It's before you even hit. Denver proper, you're getting sculptures and yeah. paintings that need that explanation. Horse is no joke. I don't uh, know if that's an art piece or, but that or a s- symbolic. What the statue. Denver Airport? No, the the uh, what? yeah the Denver Airport, but the blue horse that's like out in front. Isn't his name like Beelzebub? Yeah, something. It, the, I'll look it up. The that's, artist who he has glowing red eyes. It's this giant horse. He also has visible testicles. The artist who uh, <laughs> created that actually died while blue balls while making that that statue. Really? The so demon it, horse? Yeah, the demon horse. The person who made it passed away in the creation of it. All right. that I mean... That's just the... F- Blucifer is his name. Blucifer, Blucifer yeah, it's nuts. is adorable. Have you seen it in person? <laughs> it's Blues. It's Blues Clues' cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Blucifer. I have found clues. So look God. at him now. Yeah, I'm looking at a photo of this damn blue red-eyed horse. That thing is... And the whole airport is just so weird. It's look like at the ten- scale. Like, he's not small. Uh, yeah, he's enormous. Yeah. He's nuts. It's nuts. Yeah, the Denver airport is filled with conspiracies on top of conspiracies. It's like a giant tent, too. Do you notice that, too? Like, yeah, uh, spo- I think it looks like the mountains. Oh, is that what it's supposed it to like? It looks for? like the Rockies, but if they were made out of... You and know, there, there's a lot of crazy yeah. murals. Paper. I know the one of the biggest points of the conspiracy theorists for the Denver airport is that it went like $70 billion over budget or something. Yeah, and they're like, <laughs> and why? Like, why did it cost this much? There's like rumors of alien stuff and a whole other underground airport. And uh... I've... Yeah, I heard crab people live down underneath. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. underneath You've there. heard that? Yeah, oh, yeah. You didn't make that up right now? Oh, that is something I heard on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Crab people. He's got the text to speech. <laughs> he goes to articles and yeah. just has it Siri read it to him. <laughs> I heard it on the internet. Yeah. I uh crab I'm, people? Crab people. What does that mean? Just uh, Hollywood, walk. Hollywood elites, government elites. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, that well, are that have turned to crabs. <laughs> They turned into them, like because of a spell. Uh, yeah, so Lucifer didn't approve of them. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> I don't know the exact details. The, the, I just know they exist. And I, I wonder if anyone airport. knows the exact details. <laughs> of crab people. Do, you, do you believe in crab people? I believe in most conspiracies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, name who who turned into a crab? What a celebrity or uh, a, like head of state? Every time you see a celebrity like pass away and then they actually didn't pass away, they're actually crab people. <laughs> <laughs> really? So you should know. <laughs> Before we carry on with our conspiracy theorist talk, I don't believe in virtually any conspiracies. There's like, I don't, I just, yeah, I don't think there's a single conspiracy that I would hang my hat on and go like, oh yeah, fluoride is making us dumber. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah, those things in the sky. You might not believe in it, but you also might be proof. I might, yeah, I might be proof of it, <laughs> but it's the, I like, I'm very, and it doesn't just stop with conspiracies. I'm also, like, anti-magic. Like, I don't... That's normal. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I put my anti-conspiracy and anti-magic ways... But you are about conspiracies. I didn't know this about you. I listen to them. <laughs> yeah, I don't is. know if they're... <laughs> I don't I, know if I would hang my hat on uh, crab too many people? of them. What about crab people? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think crab people are exist like actually exist. Some crustacean peeps? I, I'm trying to f- recalculate everything now. I just think yeah, yeah. I just think it's funny that people think that 
crab people yeah, yeah. underneath the Denver airport. There's some Yeah, what a strange it's, place it's, to base like, Crab Nation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You'd think they'd want to be at the beach. Like, there's no water in Denver. Yeah. I just always think of Men, men in Black, you They're know? Just strafing. They yeah, just like, why would walk you... walk left and right? <laughs> if you're going to be <laughs> crabbing, why wouldn't you go like, somewhere you... water? Like, right, with the water, coast. Yeah. Also, if you are a crab person, like, why would you... <laughs> and I'm assuming you had the option of choosing a different animal, right? No yeah. way, dude. You know, That's like, not how it works. I don't know how it works. If you're a celebrity and you die... You claw out, <laughs> and you go to the Denver airport. You're reborn in some molten like way. Yeah, like, yeah. Crabs are you have the ability are... to lose a a limb and grow it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's not a bad gig. Are, I think they regenerate. Or right? reptilian people. That's another one. Yeah, that's yeah, the big that's, one. That's yeah. the one I've heard. Maybe that's the one. Maybe what, it wasn't crab. Which <laughs> what major airport do they live at? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the problem that I have with, with a lot of conspiracies. It's like, oh no, my bad, dude. I was I got the crab people and the lizard people confused. <laughs> I'm sorry, the lizard people. Oh, that's an episode of uh, Stranger Things. I'm sorry, I got that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, dude. I was thinking about reptar. I was thinking <laughs> I get my reptar yeah, rugrats. And that's on me. But yeah, life. Aaron Hernandez <laughs> is a robot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Whoa, dude. What? Oh, he's a shapeshifter. Bro. Yeah, dude. Get he's it, Terminator, right. man. He's from the future. That's why they. Asked him. He what didn't kill himself. One conspiracy that's been uh, circulating the internet <laughs> recently is that <laughs> the lady that kind of freaked out on the plane. Do you remember that one? Yeah. Like, that is not real. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they think she is like an AI robot sent from the White House. I've been seeing a couple of these breakdown videos. An AI <laughs> robot, robot <laughs> sent from the White House? <laughs> yeah. To some do what? Some people did like facial recognition on the video. And then I guess she came out with another video and they're like, that ain't her. And then they like tracked her location and it's a block from the White House. So they're like, oh, you o know what that only means? robots have access to that kind of <laughs> I don't know. You bro. can't get that close. I, I I'll say this about know. conspiracies. There's uh, probably a Starbucks that close to the White House. <laughs> like, honestly. Yeah, she's just doing She's just, she's just chilling. Like, I, she's just stealing Wi Fi. I'm, <laughs> I'm aware that there are some conspiracies in the last, you know, call it century that have come out to hold some water like I, what uh i would say ed snowden ed snowden hey the government's spying on you they're keeping everything they okay. have all of your data they are and then even before well i remember hearing that kind of like no what the hell there's a lot of us what are you talking about and then then and then the nsa came out and we're like yeah dude we've we have all of your texts we we've been tracking yeah. And data, we have it all. That is a step away from crab people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, that's all. That's, yeah, uh, there's so, a difference there. Um, I want to say what I think MK Ultra was also a conspiracy there that then got proved uh, that we were. I want to say MK MK Ultra was giving soldiers acid, and that that no one thought that was true. I think that I'm, I'm I might cut that later because I like I said I'm not. Is that during like Men Who Stare at Goats? Yes, that that uh, Jacob's Ladder and all of that. Yeah, the then movies ended up getting made over it, but it was wild to think that. Well, but all of those the things... government was testing hypnotic hypnosis drugs on our own soldiers. My thing about it is that if you don't think that everything that we know of is available isn't being tested. Or everything that we have tech for isn't being logged and recorded, then you're an idiot, right? Yeah, I, that's just part of the like blissful ignorance of using a phone now. So I'm like, I don't care, doesn't matter, right? Well, Record me. I'm not that interesting. For the longest time, <laughs> my uh, search history mostly has to do with things we talked about on the podcast that I Google later to see if they were true. That yeah, I said, yeah. That I confidently said. <laughs> yeah. Right. You don't like crab people will be in there later. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm so, Lizard Airport will be in there. I, I, I get real judgmental though when people hop on conspiracies or they hop on, they hang their hats on stuff where not only do you not know, but you would never even come close to having the privilege of knowing. I just don't like when it does when they decide things didn't happen. Yeah, and and like people oh. people died or whatever. I'm like, all right, well, chill out because. You, the, the moon one pisses me off. I'll be honest. But with in you. the moon one, it wasn't like and ten thousand people died. Yeah. But, but when it's like a natural tragedy or a shooting or any of that, and they're like, "That never happened." I'm like, you, you, "Keep that to yourself." Thousands yeah. of people didn't die to land on the moon, but people died. Those the uh, the three astronauts. I want to say it was the first Apollo, and and a heartbreaking oh, yeah. way. Yeah, that thing they the, the died fire. on here. Earth here. 
that which is insane but like when people say like they fake the moon landing i'm like brother we are in central florida go to kennedy space center <laughs> well why haven't we been back we did go back like yeah a handful of times man yeah the, the there's uh the, the reason why we don't go back a lot is the reason i won't go to denver for another year it's expensive it's yeah. expensive <laughs> yeah. and you know what i there's did crab people I there it's I, dangerous I it's the same as denver outer space and denver are very similar <laughs> once you get there the air you can't really breathe yeah. everything's <laughs> trippy there's different rules you're, you're floating yeah <laughs> Every, you think you like things you've never thought you liked before and then when you get back you have no money and so, yeah. and then I, I go to, I'll watch this for a stretch here. Conspiracy, conspiracy theorists and conspiracy theories. I really don't like them to the point, And I, to the point where I'll say what I, it has unveiled to me, what I do like. If I, I think a lot of things can tell you more about yourself, uh, about the things that you don't like than the things that you do like. And in the sense, it's almost like a process of elimination. So you're like refining until you finally get to going. Strawberries are my favorite berry. Okay, you know, I, I, yeah. Hopefully that's not too confusing. That's but my like, favorite Uncrustable, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. we digress. Yeah. But like uh, conspiracy theories, I can't see. I, I, I can't experience it. It's just a thought that will never get to the answer. And it's not very thought provoking to me. But when you go out to Denver and you go out to a place called Meow, uh, Meow Wolf or any art installation, I really wanted to throw this out here on today's episode because I feel like um, we're 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 so used to uh, America's funniest videos right now as entertainment, and that's awesome. I love seeing a dad rack his nuts on like some playground as he's playing with his kid. That's always going to be funny and entertaining. But it still lacks some substance for me. It's not a pre-thought out expression of anything. Exactly. It's just, oh, that guy got hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and there's a time and place for that. But I, I just beg anybody, please, go go get your art on. And uh, in 2024, everything has gone so digital, so technology, so uh, theorist, yo, conspiracy, did you believe that this happened? And then we're, I think we're almost forgetting how nice it is to look at anything man-made that took a thousand hours. Without mm -hmm. a corporate sponsorship. Without a corporate sponsorship. Or at least one that is thoughtful, you know? That someone came out with the sole goal of making this idea into reality. And you know, I will say, and I've not on here, but you know my opinion, Banksy, to me, is the perfect marriage of now and still doing and, and true it, art that uh, without any reward you know we don't even know who Banksy is kind of yeah but just last week right after the uh Olympics I've, he put out like 10 different pieces and the thing is these street art pieces are not on property that's owned by the artist so they're it's not licensed and technically wherever it's painted owns the piece mm -hmm. because it's their property mm. it's not owned by the artist yeah and that's their choice by putting it on a public building or a private building that they don't own but now it's worth so much money half of those new banksies got stolen or defaced yeah, yeah. big thing before yeah. they could really be preserved and only a handful of them came through but you're right and and the art that a lot of people are ingesting now is chosen for them. It's in a museum. It's in or, uh, or, they they're just going to see air quotes art. But what I like about the fact that now we have the internet, we have the ability to search anything. We can be anywhere in the world in one second. Is you if you put any effort forward, you can find your art. Mm -hmm. You can yeah. find the stuff you think is cool. You can find it might be a graphic novel or a sculpture artist that lives in Brazil, but you don't find it if you don't look. And that's kind of what I would encourage yeah. anybody to do. Use use twenty twenty four as a tool. Use the internet as a tool. Don't let you know, modern day society have you being the tool yeah. as they make you work and go, yeah, yeah, you do like this. You do like this. Like, don't let them tell you what to like. Yeah, yeah. Don't tell it. Uh oh, now we sound like crab people. You know, <laughs> I just like art because it's, you could tell, like, it's someone's idea, right? Whether I, I know, their, yeah, hey, whether I like that person. Right, but or someone not. has thought about this so painfully much that they just they had to create it in real life, and I think that's I, 
I love that. And it I, reminds you I appreciate you it. what we're yeah. capable of. And you know, I saw I, this is said a lot now, but someone was saying they were bummed that AI is creating so much visual art because the the useful way for humans to utilize AI is to do the other things so that we can create more art. Right, yeah. You know, do the things that we mm-hmm. don't want to do, the menial tasks, change the oil, mm-hmm. you know, build our houses for us, but we'll we'll sculpt in the meantime. Cuz like you said, it's somebody had a feeling and they wanted to make it look like something. Right. I just yeah. uh I I just never saw it coming that the older I get, the more and more I yearn for something that's not lying to me, that doesn't come with a string attached, and I promise you a painting is not coming with a string attached. There, If someone put 500 hours onto a canvas, that's them accomplishing their dream. Mm-hmm. And man, just go hug an artist. Go, and 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 I mean that in the broadest definition. Musician, a comedian, a painter, anybody. Any, and, and you, who's listening to this, and if you haven't created something, go out and experience one of the best life highs that I have ever experienced, which is making something and calling it your own. That is episode 21. 21. My, 21 Savage all 21, day. 21. 21. <laughs> 21. 21. 21. We, uh, we also learned that under the Denver airport live crab people. And yeah. reptiles. And on my flight home, I realized that the Orlando airport just has crabs. <laughs> <laughs> That's good sauce. Episode 21. Thank you, wives and mothers. Thank you to our sponsors, Mo DeWitt, Half Barrel Beer Project, and the Orange County History Center. And welcome to the world. Hopefully by the time you hear a new episode, Ross's baby. And I'll drop the name right now, Miles Carson Padgett. That's your treat for listening the whole episode. Much love. Night, night. Miles! You know it. I know it. We know it. This episode is always brought to you by Mo DeWitt, personal attorney. If it's a slip and fall, you're calling Mo DeWitt. If you're injured on the go... Just call Mo. He's the man of events. He's the king of live events. He makes stuff happen. Yeah, that's what he does. And September 5th, the Mo DeWitt Comedy Jam. My God, that is the place to be. September 5th at the Orlando Funny Bone, the Mo DeWitt Comedy Jam. Don't know where to go? Go see Mo. This is Comedy Jam. But it. We'll always make it rhyme. You can get your tickets at mocomedyjam.com. Once again, that's mocomedyjam.com. Injured on the go? Just call Mo.